Hello friends, it's Jessica from Three Rivers Homestead and we are back. We are still plugging along on the Three Rivers Challenge. This is the pantry challenge that I do every January and February where I document all of the meals that we are eating from our pantry during those months. And this pantry challenge really does represent the culmination of an entire year's worth of work in growing and preserving food. I take you guys along through the gardening season and through the food preservation season in the fall. And then this pantry challenge allows you to see how we use all of that food that we were able to put up. But another great thing about this pantry challenge is that it just so happens to fall during the months where I'm really doing a lot of garden planning for this coming year's garden. And so as I find myself emptying jars and planning meals for my pantry, I'm making a mental list of all of the things I wish I would have grown more of last year or been able to preserve more of next, um, last year so that this year I do it differently. And this week I was able to begin my winter sowing. We planted the first seeds of the 2024 garden with that list in mind. And so I have a whole video that explains how you winter sow. This is essentially taking these little plastic jugs. These are water jugs that Adam rescued from work. <laughs> they use these at his work. And instead of throwing them in the trash, he brings them home for me to use. And you create little mini greenhouses out of these. Um, you guys may or may not know that we do not have a greenhouse. And that is just because we live in a very windy area. We're prone to tornadoes and winds and things like that. And everybody I know that has had a cheaper plastic greenhouse has ended up losing it within a few years. And we don't want to invest in something like that that will likely be trashed in a short time. And so we are saving up. When we finally build a greenhouse, we are going to do it right and do something sturdy that we think can handle our winds around here. But in the meantime, we make do with these little mini plastic greenhouses. And so every year I sow a lot of my cold hardy seeds in these. I do brassicas, I do lettuce, a lot of perennial herbs and some flowers. And this works really well for us. So if you don't have a greenhouse and you want to go ahead and get started on sowing some seeds, check out the winter sowing video that I'm going to put in the video description and you can learn more. But this felt really good to get a start on this year's growing season because there are definitely things I'm missing right now. I really want to focus on growing more strawberries this year because we don't have any in the house. Um, there's a lot more herbs that I want to grow. I, I just am really making a list. Brassicas, I want to have more cabbage and broccoli in storage. So all of that begins right now and is fresh on my mind thanks to doing this pantry challenge. So here is the list of the first round of winter sewing that I did. I have more jugs that I'm going to prepare next week. I just needed more potting soil in order to accomplish that. But speaking of lists, let's go ahead and move on to the meals for this week. This was my meal plan. You guys know that every week I make a detailed meal plan. I make a list of all the meal prep that I need to do and also make a grocery list of ingredients that I'm going to need to shop for in our pantry that's down in our cellar in order to accomplish preparing all of these meals. And so we made our list. I typically do this on Sunday and I meal plan for Monday through Friday. We are a lot looser in our meal plans on the weekends because we might sleep in a little bit, be a little more spontaneous. Adam might give us some um, an idea of what he's in the mood for. Um, so I don't plan it as strictly as I do throughout the week when we're doing school and we stick to our more rigid schedule. So on Sunday, I go downstairs. You can see we still have a lot of food on the shelves downstairs. Even though we are almost um, a month and a half into the challenge, we're still stocked really well. And we are steadily working through the items that we are trying to use up to make room for what we're going to grow this year. I marked everything off of my inventory and I'm getting everything put away in the kitchen and let's go ahead and move on to some of the meals that we made this week. So the first thing I want to show you is how I make my homemade chicken nuggets. So you guys know chicken nuggets are a staple food for children. They really love them and um, I don't want to deprive my children of chicken nuggets even during a pantry challenge. They are really easy to make from scratch and they're so much healthier when you do them this way 
versus the ones that you can purchase at the store. So I'm just starting with some chicken breasts here and I'm chopping them up into little chunks. Each one is maybe an inch and a half or two inches in length. And we're just gonna get them all cut up and get prepared to bread them and then we're going to fry them. A couple weeks ago I showed you how I make my homemade fish sticks for the children in one of my meal videos and this process is exactly the same. We are just swapping out this chicken for the cod that I used in the fish sticks. So you can bread them with anything that you would like. What I like to do is I have one bowl of arrowroot powder here, then I dip it in a mixture of eggs that are kind of watered down, and then I have a bowl of cracker crumbs. and. Um, sometimes if I don't have uh, cracker crumbs, I might have some stale bread that I turn into breadcrumbs, but anything like that that'll give it a nice crispy outer breading layer once they are fried. So now once we get them all breaded, we're going to go ahead and deep fry these. And I have a pot of home rendered lard on the stove, and this is what I'm using today to fry our um, chicken nuggets here. And I just wait until they get nice and crispy and browned on the outside and then I let the, them sit on a paper towel here to kind of absorb some of the grease and then I just start feeding kids in shifts. They like them as they're warm and some of the kids like ketchup or mustard, various little dipping sauces and during the pantry challenge we've been using these little um, dipping containers that really helps us ration out our condiments so that the kids don't fly through them so quickly. But the kids really love them. Elizabeth here is saying it's good, but it's hot. <laughs> they were very hot, fresh out of the pot of lard, but um, the kids were impatient and wanted to eat them right away. So several of the children said these were the best chicken nuggets they've ever had. So I was um, very happy with that. This is a meal that I like to make for the children whenever I have chicken breasts in the freezer. So when I was done frying them, I had this used up lard that has all the um, cracker crumbs in it. And so instead of wasting that, I'm going to dump a pint jar here of sunflower seeds that we saved from last year's garden. And then I'm just gonna throw in random seeds and things that birds would like that are in my pantry. So I have a lot of split peas in the pantry. That makes a good addition to a bird feeder. I also have a little bit of wheat berries here in a cup and I'm just gonna mix this all together and let the, the lard really coat this. And then when lard is brought back to room temperature, it solidifies and what we'll have when we're done is something that we can put in our bird feeder outside. Now in the summer when it's really hot, these homemade um, bird feeders made out of the tallow or lard don't work that great because as it gets super hot, it begins to melt and it can make a mess below your bird feeder. But I find this time of year is wonderful because it does kind of drop right below freezing at night. So it keeps it nice and solidified. And then during the day, as it warms up a little bit, it's perfect so that the birds can peck the seeds out of that fat mixture. Now, if my bird feeder here is all full, and I still wanted to make something like this, I will sometimes make a little block and hang it out in the chicken run for the chickens and that keeps them entertained and they really enjoy kind of pecking away at the seeds and eating that. Um, so just a fun way to prevent all of that spent lard from your deep frying pot from going to waste and I'll really enjoy watching the birds peck at this while I'm doing my dishes. All right, let's move on to the next meal that I made this week for the children. I am grinding up some soft white wheat berries and we're gonna make homemade pop tarts or toaster pastries for the children. So what I need to do first is run these through the grain mill, but this gives me a whole grain flour that isn't great for pastries. I need to sift the bran out of this freshly ground flour in order to make a pastry flour that will work great for these pop tarts. So I have this sifter, it's an electric sifter that just fits right on top of my Bosch mixer and I will link this in the description for you. It works great. You just have to be patient and not overfill it with the flour. If you just do about a cup or two at a time and let it run for a while, it works perfectly. You can see that 
all of the bran here is left behind and we will use that to feed our mealworm farm. That's the bedding we use in our mealworm farm. And then the flour then is in the bottom part of the mixer and it is just beautiful pastry flour here that will be perfect for making those pastries. And when the kids heard that I was making Pop-Tarts, they started dancing. They were very excited about that. Um, so just because it's a pantry challenge doesn't mean we're gonna be deprived of our favorite homemade treats. We're gonna get started making our pie crust for the pastries. So I use, for every two cups of flour, I use about three-fourths a cup of lard or palm fruit shortening, about a fourth a cup of cold water, and one teaspoon of salt. And then what I'm going to do is roll that out. I'm grabbing my filling here. We are using a pear butter. This is a home canned pear butter we made last fall. It makes a great filling. And so I just use my biscuit cutter to cut out a circle of the dough, put a little dollop of the pear butter on the inside, and then press the edges around. And this is just one way you can do this. Another way you could do this is roll this out and cut it into rectangular shapes. Now when you do this, the edges don't look very pretty. <laughs> so what I like to do is take my pizza cutter here and kind of cut around the edges to smooth it out. And that makes them look a little nicer. These went into the oven on 350 degrees for maybe 20 minutes or so. And then while they're cooling, we need to work on our glaze. So I just took some powdered sugar, some vanilla extract, and just a little bit of water to thicken it up. And then I'm adding some freeze-dried homegrown beetroot powder here. So in, in place of using food dye, this is a great way to turn your glaze a wonderful pink color that the children really like. And that little amount of beetroot powder, you do not taste beets at all. You would have to put a lot of the powder in there in order to get that earthy beet taste. So just that little bit gives it that vibrant color and these little ones are being so patient there waiting for me to finish. They are so excited about this breakfast. So I need to hurry up and get these glazed. So these are pretty much cooled down. They're still a little warm. So when I put the glaze on top, that kind of the heat will kind of let it run down the side and cover the rest of the pastry. So this is one of those breakfasts. I don't do it every day, but if I have a little energy, this is something that I'll make special for them. I just scrambled up some eggs so they get a little protein with all of those carbs and sugar, and this definitely made the children happy. This is what the inside looks like with the pear butter filling, and as far as Pop-Tarts go or toaster pastries, it isn't that bad. Of course, there is some sugar for you, but at least there's no food dye and preservatives and high fructose corn syrup and all of the other um, yucky stuff that you would get in a store-bought version of this. So after I trimmed the edges of those pastries and had a little bit of leftover dough, I decided that for lunch I would go ahead and make a pie. And I'm going to make a pumpkin pie using one of these freeze-dried pumpkin pie mixes that I made last fall with you guys in a video. All of the freeze-dried pumpkin sugar and all of the other dried things, the spices, um, anything dry that is in my pumpkin pie is in that jar. And then all I need to add to it is two eggs and then one can of this coconut cream. And I have an instant pumpkin pie filling, which is so convenient. I'm just going to take my immersion blender here and mix this all together. Now when you use freeze dried ingredients, they do take a little time to fully absorb all of the liquid. So after I blended this together, I did want it to sit out on the counter for about 10 minutes before I filled my pie shell with it. And once I felt like it was fully absorbed, we went ahead and threw that in there and then we got this in the oven on 350 degrees and it baked for about 45 minutes. In the meantime for lunch, I am hard boiling some eggs. I love my Dash egg cooker. This is my favorite tool for hard boiling farm fresh eggs. It steams them and I find that steaming farm fresh eggs 
allows you to peel them the easiest because if you um, have chickens and raise eggs, you know that the fresher the egg is, the harder it is to peel. Store-bought eggs peel pretty easily because they are older. And so I do find that using that steaming tool really does help me waste less of the egg as I am peeling. So we got a dozen of them peeled, and now I'm going to make a sauce for my egg salad here. I'm essentially making homemade mayonnaise. I've showed you guys this a couple times. So one egg, I used about two tablespoons of an acid. I used a pickled pepper brine this time, and I used two tablespoons of mustard, a little bit of salt, and about a cup of avocado oil. And then I'm mixing that all together, but I am not going to allow this to get um, completely thick. I want it to be a little bit watery. That's how I like it for my egg salad because it's really going to thicken as it mixes with those yolks um, as I put the egg salad completely together. So once you start making homemade mayonnaise, you will never go back to store-bought. It's pretty easy and delicious and a whole lot healthier for you. And it's great on a pantry challenge because um, you don't have to worry about running out. <laughs> you have all the other ingredients in the pantry. So next thing I'm going to do is take my dozen eggs here and I'm just using a pastry cutter here to chop them up um, pretty finely. And then I like to add some kind of veggie to my egg salad. This is um, pickled celery that I canned last fall. This was some homegrown celery but the chunks of it are rather large, so I'm just going to chop that up so that it blends in nicely with the chopped eggs. And then we're going to add that to the mix and move on to the rest of our ingredients. So I'm pouring in that liquidy mayonnaise mixture. Remember that had the pickled banana pepper brine in it, and so that's going to give it some good flavor. And I'm just adding some salt and pepper before we mix this all together. I love to make egg salad. Um, it's just a really easy lunch to make for the kids, packed with a lot of protein, and it's a great way to use up eggs, which we have because we raise our own eggs here on the homestead. And this is what our pumpkin pie looked like coming out of the oven. Just a really easy pie made out of the leftover dough and a freeze-dried pumpkin pie mix. I did have some rice cakes down the pantry. I think I have one more package after this um, before we run out but I didn't have time to make bread, so that's a great way to serve the egg salad when you don't have um, bread in the house. So everybody was very happy with this simple lunch. And then of course, you can't go wrong if they ate their egg salad, everybody got a slice of warm pumpkin pie. I really enjoyed having that freeze-dried pie mix. I think next year I'm gonna experiment with adding the eggs in um, just making the, the pie filling mixture up and freeze drying it even with the wet ingredients in. So all I'll have to do is rehydrate with some water and that would be even easier. But we will experiment that with, with that um, next fall. And um, at this point, I have a lot of canned fruit pie filling that I really need to focus on using up. We have, I think, 25 or so quarts down there. So I need to get busy making a whole lot more <laughs> pies for the children. And I don't think they will object to that. All right, next meal. This is one of our favorite breakfasts. It's a savory breakfast. We like to use bacon ends. If you get bacon um, from the butcher and you get your um, bacon process, the end portion of it, you know, it's cut into those long rectangular shapes, but there are these ends left over that the butcher will kind of chunk up for you. So they taste just like the other slices of bacon, but they're super thick. And what we love to do is fry them up. And then as that bacon cooks down, it releases the bacon grease into the pan, which is perfect for frying potatoes up with it. So I'm just chopping up some potatoes here and adding it to that. And then I don't even need to salt and pepper these or anything. It has all of that wonderful, yummy bacon flavor in the pan already. And then we're going to go ahead and serve that. We have three quarts of home canned pear slices here. I went ahead and drained out the pear juice from that and we are not going to waste that. I figured I have the pear juice here and it was about six cups or so, five and a half cups. So why don't I go ahead and turn that into some jello. But first here, Miss Hannah wants to try one of those <laughs> pears. Now I, you can see I can my pears with the peels on and I do not add any sugar to my jars. These are just plain pear slices in water and they still taste amazing. 
Um, I'll show you here Hannah's reaction, and she is a true food critic. If it doesn't taste good, the baby is not going to eat it. And she took a bite, and she loved it. So you can tell that even um, if you can your peaches and your pears without sugar, it's still sweet. It still tastes delicious. You don't need to add that sugar to it. But let's go ahead. This is just plain um, pear juice. Like I said, no sugar added. So what I'm going to do is add about three tablespoons of gelatin per cup of juice I have here. And I then I put it on the stove just to kind of let it melt down a little bit so that that gelatin will fully um, dissolve into the juice. Put it in a little dish here and get it in the fridge and that will set and the children can have that with lunch later on in the day. But until then, we need to finish up breakfast and this is what that looked like for the children. Just a yummy, hearty breakfast on this winter day. So throughout this pantry challenge, I've been really focused on using up a lot of the canned goods because I do can the majority of what we grow um, or purchase in bulk around here. And I sometimes forget about the things that I have in the freezer. And so I was looking out there and I was like, oh, I froze so many peppers. We, we had the best green pepper year we have ever had here on our homestead. And I froze so many bags of these peppers that I am just forgetting about. And so I saw them out there and I said, all right, I'm going to work these into a lunch for the children. So I've got those peppers on the stove and I added some freeze dried onion and I'm going to add one little puck of our garlic puree that was in the freezer. And then I just had some leftover bacon from the weekend that was sitting in the fridge and needed to be used up. And I'm going to get that all mixed together. And then in a separate pan, I have one quart of some home canned black beans. And then I'm just going to use up the rest of this jar or this container of Redmond's Real Salt taco seasoning. And we are just going to make a little taco, fajita, bean burrito kind of <laughs> mixture here. And this is what that looked like. So really focusing on using up those peppers. I need to get more intentional about using them up because... I, I don't even know how many bags I have out there, and I just really haven't been very good about using them. But I'm hoping we have another pepper year that is as good as the one we had last year. It just, the weather was just so warm and dry that the peppers loved it here in Ohio. Um, in previous years, I've had a really hard time growing them. So the children are enjoying that jello. It was ready by the time we had lunch, and then we were ready to move on to the next meal. So for the next meal, we are going to make a crock pot soup on one of our busy nights of activities. So I just grabbed a bunch of jars from the cellar. We have a quart here of tomato sauce. I have one quart of canned sweet corn. This is a pint of salsa. And then I have this pint here of taco sauce. This was the intent of making the soup was to use this up. It's from 2021 and it is not our favorite thing, obviously. That's why we still have a jar of it. So I'm going to hide this taco sauce in the soup. I basically built this entire soup around using up that one pint of taco sauce. And I'm going to add one quart here of Southwestern vegetable soup. This is really spicy and has a bunch of good taco seasonings in it. I'm going to sprinkle in some freeze-dried onions, and then I have two cans of this homegrown beef that the butcher canned up for us, and we are literally just going to dump everything in here and mix it all together. A lot of you in my previous videos have asked about this little tool. This is a canning lid opener. It's made by Four Jars. That's the company that makes my favorite canning lids, and so I'll link this in the description. This is a great way to remove your canning lids without damaging the seals on them. And if you like to reuse your canning lids for whatever reason, this will prevent you from bending up the edges of it. So we're adding those freeze dried onions here. And then I also grabbed another one of those garlic pucks and threw that in there and that will kind of melt as this heats up. I am really enjoying this canned beef. We had an entire heifer um, canned up like this, minus the steaks in 2022. And we have two heifers that we are going to process at the end of this year. And I'm going to have another full heifer canned up because it is so convenient to have this meat um, just kind of ready to go. I've used it for so many things, beef and rice, beef and noodles, lots of soups and stews and things, even spaghetti. 
So on a day when I'm really busy and I don't have time to brown meat, I love being able to just pour in one of those cans. I also sprinkled in some freeze-dried spinach powder just for a little nutritional boost. Of course, we're going to salt and pepper it. And then we are going to get this on the in the crock pot since it's already, everything is pretty much already cooked that's in it. We're just going to put it on low and let it kind of warm up and mix together um, so that we can enjoy that. And then after lunch that day, I went ahead and added the leftover beans from those fajitas that the kids had eaten. And we put the beans in there because why not? <laughs> they went well with the kind of taco soup that we're creating. And this is what it looked like later in the day. This was a busy ballet night. So the kids were able to grab a bowl of soup with some tortilla chips or something whenever they were hungry and wanted it. All right, we have more frozen stuff that I'm trying to use up. I also have bags of frozen green beans. Later on in the week, the weather was nice, so we grilled up some pork chops and went ahead and served them with some of those steamed green beans. So the weather really is starting to turn here. It was so cold last month, and now we had, I think it was a high of 58 degrees. So we are just enjoying the weather we are enjoying all of our activities, the karate nights and ballet nights, and just buckling down and really hitting the books with school. And that is just the season of life that we are in right now. But my heart <laughs> is really starting to yearn for those summer days where the activities slow down and the schoolwork is finished and I can get my hands in the dirt. And I know that winter sowing those seeds this week was just kind of a taste of what's to come. Um, later this week, I will be moving the grow lights into the kitchen and starting my pepper seeds indoors under the lights. And I'm just so excited for the coming year of growing food and preserving food and taking you guys along on the journey with me. So I hope you guys are enjoying this series of videos of meals. If you guys like this kind of content, make sure you let me know in the comments. And even after the pantry challenge is over, if this is something you guys enjoy, I would love to continue sharing our meals with you. Um, and we will be back next week with more. Until then, friends, I hope you have a blessed week and we will talk to you later.